Okay, in this video I'm going to begin exercise 3b of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 76 and the question is number 1. It states a particle is projected upwards with speed u at an angle alpha to the hill, which it itself is inclined at an angle beta to the horizontal. So the first thing we do is we sketch our xy axis, or xy plane, excuse me, like so. The next thing we do is we draw our incline and we know the incline is at an angle beta. The next thing we do is rotate our xy plane here that way so that means we need to draw a perpendicular like so. So this is x prime this is y prime. Alright? Uh, okay, anything else? We know that the projectile is projected with a speed u at an angle alpha to the hill. So what I'm going to do actually is pick up this, this let's say this y-axis and I'm going to move it down here. Just so it's out of the way. Like so. And just one sec there now. Now so we said we're projecting this at an angle alpha to the hill. Like that, to the hill. Now of course we also know that this angle alpha, if we call this angle here gamma, we know that alpha is equal to gamma minus beta. Why would we do that? Well, just remember, if you go back to our unit circle, uh, on X, I think it was uh, like 26 or something like that, on, X, on the last exercise, we had to, oh, it wasn't 26, let me find out exactly what it was. It was 21. We were asked to find like all these different 30 degree angles around the place and describe describe a single angles by them. So, so what we always do is we read anti-clockwise from zero degrees. And as a result, every line anywhere can only be described by one number rather than taking them for example from this axis and then this axis and then here where we can get different uh, the, the same number will describe the same line or different lines so you always describe it from the zero degrees here so in this case alpha would be gamma minus beta is there anything else we need to do of course there is we need to do gravity so gravity acts like so. It acts in the the y plane or the negative j hat dimension. However, what we need to do now is see how much of it is in the x prime and how much of it is in the y prime dimensions. So we need to resolve this vector into its component unit vectors. So we do this. That's a right angle. Now we said, uh, said before that where two where two angles bisect each other with a right angle, which we have here, then their angles are, are the same. So this angle here is beta. Alright, so if we resolve this, this is going to be g sine beta. This is g cosine beta. This is going that way, and this is going that way. Now for that reason, we know, look, that this g cos beta is the negative y prime, and this g sine beta is the negative x prime. Alright? So G is acting to slow the particle down in both dimensions. So it's time for us to do UVAST. So we have our X dimension and our Y dimension. Like so. So what is U? Excuse me. We could say, uh, for the moment I'm going to say U here is, if you resolve U, how do I do this? I'm just going to do it underneath here. Just, I'm just going to sketch it here. So say there's, there's our incline beta, and there's U, like that. Alright, and here is, that's X prime, that is Y prime. So for that reason, if we resolve U, or if we resolve U here, we're going to get these two vectors here, U, and we knew this was alpha, sine alpha, 
and this vector here is u cos alpha, like so. So it's u cos alpha i hat and u sin alpha j hat. Both of those are positive. All right, so let's write that in up here. U Of course, you could put in alpha is equal to gamma minus beta as well. That's equivalent. That's the same. That's the exact same thing. So what else do we know? The acceleration in the x direction is equal to g sine beta. And I'm always going to say it's actually minus g sine beta because look, it's in the negative x direction. So it's minus g sine beta. And this is minus g cos beta. I'll really leave it there. Just let me think there for a second now. If we know g is negative, no, actually, I'm going to leave these as positive because, like I said from the start, I said this in previous videos, the book will say that the book will say that g or minus g is equal to 9.81, whereas I'm going to say that g is equal to minus 9.81. So the negative sign is accounted for in the fact that I have a positive g. Okay, this is something we have done plenty of times at this stage. So the time, of course, for both is the same. What else are we asked to find? We're asked to find v sub x. v is equal to u plus a t. So I'm going to get out my red barrel. v is equal to u, which is u cos alpha u plus a t plus g sine beta t. This is ut plus a half at squared. Like so. Similarly over here we have u sine alpha plus g sine beta T, or that's cosine beta, excuse me. And we have ut, which is u sine alpha t plus a half g cos beta t squared. I know that's looking a bit dodgy there. So let's just check the answers at the back of the book. So what are we on? 3b question 1. So it should be u cos alpha minus g sine beta. What's that v? u cos alpha minus g sine beta. Just one moment there now.